I'm going to put our number talk problem up on the board. Remember that when you are thinking about your solution and how you're getting to your answer, I want you to give me a thumbs up against your chest when you have at least one strategy and one answer. When you have come to an answer, and maybe you can think about, is there another way or strategy that I can solve that same problem? I want you to give me another finger if you've thought of another solution, okay? I'm going to put our problem on the board. Remember that you're doing this all in your head. It is not about working it out on our piece of paper. Okay, so our problem today is 937 minus 609. So I want you to take a few minutes to see if you can come up to um, an answer for this problem. And then remember to show me that you have an answer and how many strategies you've used to get to an answer. Okay, I see a couple people who've come up with at least one strategy. Like you made a picture of it with your larger number on top and your small your smaller number on the bottom. Okay, so 937 and 609. Okay, can you walk us through how you made a mental picture of that? And then also the seven was not bigger than nine, so you can't take it away. Um, okay. Like if I have seven dollars, I can't use nine, so I had to borrow a ten from the thirty, and that would become a two. Okay. Um, so then you have 17, um, and 17 minus 9 would be 8, and then um, 2 minus 0 would be 2, and then 6 minus 9 would be 6. Okay, so Aubrey tells us that her answer is 328. Okay, did anybody 
come up with a different strategy or have a different way of thinking about that problem. Okay, Cooper? Um, also, I went nine and 37, so I'm multiplying Okay, so let's start from the beginning. You you took? 937, so I'm so you took 937, and tell us what you took away from that. 37. Okay. And why did you take 37 away from 937? Okay, a friendlier number that you can use. Okay, and so what does that give you? 900. Okay, 900. And then what did you do? I took away the 9 for 609. Okay, so Cooper took 609, and he took away 9, and what did that give you?
know that that's, if you do all these words, that's going to go on top. So okay. I know if you're going to be going to be Okay, so then you put the three in the hundreds place and the two in the tens place. elaborate on Aubrey's thinking here. Why can I not take nine cubes away because if I'm working with the base 10 blocks? Taylor? Because seven is smaller than nine. Okay, seven is smaller than nine. Do I have nine cubes? Do I have that value in my model here? Or do I need to make some changes? Okay, so Aubrey, walk us through how you would get to that value because we have that amount. It's just not in the form that we need it to be in.
hundreds away, or six away from the nine. Okay, so I'm going to take six flats away, and that represents the six hundred that needs to be taken away. Okay, and then what do we see? Um, then, then you add up your eight cubes plus your ten, your ten rods, and your two rods. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So Aubrey told us that she's taken away what is um, what needs to be taken away. So then our job is to count and see what's remaining. So we have three flats remaining, which would give us what digit in the hundreds place? Jameson, if I have three flats remaining, what digit would that give me in the hundreds place? A three. And then I have two cubes remaining, which would give me what digit in the tens place? A two. A two. And then we've already talked about how we have eight cubes remaining. So what digit would that be in the ones place? Eight. eight. Okay, so that was another method that we could use to get to that solution. Okay, so another strategy that maybe we haven't mentioned that would also help you to solve this problem. Okay, Emmett? So I started at 609. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to record how you're thinking. So you started at 609. And then I, I added... 300 to that. Okay, so you added 300, and why did you add 300? We're subtracting. Why would you add 300? Because that would be, get me closer to 900. Okay, it would get you closer to 900. So if you add, if you're at 609 and you add 300, where would that put you at? 909. Okay. And then I added 20. Okay, so you're adding 20. And so your goal here. Emmett's goal with the strategy he's using is to get closer to that 937, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've added 20, where would that put you at? That would put me at 900. you found your solution in the jumps that you made, correct? Okay, so in order for Emmett to get his answer, he had to add up the jumps that he made. He made a jump of 300, a jump of 20, and a jump of 8. And so when he adds those together, he got 328. Okay, uh, Contavious? Can you, uh, can you do this at the uh, for, um, for the, for, like, other Okay, so could we do the same strategy? It's a similar strategy, but could we use the same sort of method, but instead of starting at 609, start at 937? And instead of adding, could we subtract to go to friendly numbers? Can somebody help me walk through that strategy? Because that's also a, another way we could get to the problem. So instead of starting at 609, like Emmett's strategy, let's start at... Um, 937 and we want to go to the next friendly number and make those jumps and we're going to see our answer in the jumps that we make. Okay, so Kyler, can you help me walk through this problem? Okay, so what's your goal? Where are you trying to get to? I'm trying to get to 609. Okay, you're trying to get to 609, so you're, you're, um, you said to subtract 300? Yes. Okay, so if I take away 300 from 937, where would that put me at? Okay, 637. Now, subtract 10. Okay, subtract 10. And where would that put you? 627. Good. And now, subtract 7. Okay, take away 7. And now, I'll put you at 627. And now, subtract 11. to add up the jumps that he made to go from 937 to 609. And so we have three, he made, he took away 300, then he took away 10, 7, 
and 11. And so when you add up those jumps, Tyler, what does that give you? 328. Okay, 328. Now, Tyler used that method. Was there, could we use that same method, but did he have to take away 10 here? What if he took away 20? Would that still get him eventually to the correct answer? Do you have to choose 10, 7, and 11? No, okay. Are there any questions about these strategies that we've used here? Okay, who can tell me what do you think is the most effective strategy or efficient strategy that you would use if you were going to solve this problem? And who can explain why you think that's the most efficient strategy? Remember, if we were gonna solve this problem, we would want to do it in our head, and we wanna think about the strategy that's gonna get us to the answer the quickest and with the correct answer. So who would like to share why you think the strategy and which one is the most efficient? Okay, Aiden, what do you think? Okay, strategy number one. Why do you think strategy number one is the most efficient to get you to the answer? Okay, it was the easiest for you to think about. Is that maybe because we're used to writing it out that way? And so when you thought about it in your head, you could kind of picture out doing those steps with your pencil. Okay. Um, Danny, what do you think is the most efficient strategy to use to solve this? Okay, strategy number one, it was the fastest for you. Okay. Um, Contavious, which one do you think is the best? I think, um, I think strategy two, because it kind of breaks it apart so you, like, you know what kind of number you're getting. Okay, so Contavious said he thinks strategy number two is the most efficient because it was easiest for him to think about those numbers in his head. Because it, it gives us those friendly numbers that we like to work with. Okay, Alexa? I think Sayla's strategy was the easiest. Okay, and Sayla gave us this strategy. Okay, so why do you think Sayla's was the easiest to use? It's the easiest to picture your Okay, so if we're having to work this out in our heads and do it mentally, Alexa thinks that this strategy that Sayla brought to us was the easiest to picture in our heads. Okay, Jameson? I thought um, colors is the one. Um, okay, this one down here, our last one where we're making those, instead of starting with 609, start with 937, and make, start with our larger value and work to our smaller one. Okay, why do you think that one was the most efficient or easiest for you to think about in your head? Because to me it was the, um, it was the simplest. Okay, the simplest. Why do you think it was the simplest? Um, do you like working with those friendlier numbers mm -hmm. and getting it to a number, taking away those uh, multiples of 10 help you can kind of think about that in your head? Okay, um, Macy? Number one is Okay, you think it's number one is quicker? Okay, Carter? Okay, so you did this, you used the same strategy as Sayla and you thought about taking away um, the ones place and when you had to borrow, you kind of thought about it mentally that way. Okay, good. Aubrey? I think Sayla's strategy was easiest because it just breaks it down into simple numbers than mm -hmm. like having to really come to the same Okay, good. So it's all about make, if we're doing this mentally, it's all about making sure that we're working with those easier and friendlier numbers in our head. Okay, Corbett? I think Sayla's because you know, like Aubrey said, it's very easy like, just to break it apart and mm -hmm. just add up the numbers. Okay, good. So we've decided that most of us thought that Sayla's strategy was the most efficient or easiest for us to do mentally in our head. Is there a strategy that we shared that was still correct, it wasn't wrong, but it probably would not have been the most efficient way to get to our answer, and it's probably not one we would want to use if we have to solve a question mentally in our heads. And who can explain why it's probably not the most efficient? Okay, Piper? strategy was the least efficient because it's a little bit difficult for us to picture moving those blocks around and um, exchanging a rod for a cube. It's hard to visualize that in our heads. Okay, good. Um, Danny, you think collars was not easy for you to picture in your head? Okay, well we can walk through some more problems and maybe see if we can make that make a little bit more sense to you. Okay, Jameson? Um, it was either the base 10 blocks or strategy 2 because strategy 2 is hard to picture in my head. Okay, so it might be 
hard for you to remember which numbers you're taking away and then having to add those back to your answer. Okay, Aubrey? I think the base 10 blocks or image strategy is probably the hardest. Okay, so the base 10 blocks, we kind of all, do we all agree that the base 10 blocks was probably not the most efficient way to get to our answer? Okay, Kayla? I think tubers and Okay, why do you think those are the hardest or hardest to picture in your head? Because if you do that way, one, you might know, not know what you need to subtract. And then two, you have to subtract more than you even need to. And then you have to add the numbers up. And then so you kind of think it's maybe a few more extra steps. Okay. Corbett? I think um, number two. Uh, yeah, number two. Because uh, I have two things for it. Basically, exactly. I think it's very hard to picture it in your head. And the and second thing is just looking at it making it very complicated. So it's just harder for you to imagine what, what you're taking away in your head. Okay, Tyler? I think the base just blocks because it's hard to picture all the flats and the rods and the mm -hmm. numbers in your head and, and then like, take them away mm -hmm. and change them and like change the rod and, into a 10, into a 10. Cubes. Yeah. So Tyler agrees also that the base 10 blocks is helpful maybe when we're starting out we can work with it and move the actual blocks around but it's probably not the most efficient way for us to solve that problem okay jameson um strategy one and either the base 10 blocks would be um, more efficient maybe on paper okay that's a good point so maybe if we could actually draw out what we're exchanging and moving around that would be easier for us to do if, we're, if we have paper or actually use the manipulatives versus us trying to think about it Good job, everybody. You guys did a great job sharing out all of your strategies.